So in the last video, we were going to bring in uh, another image and, and notice that it is very, very, very large. Sometimes you can't control that. Now, one of the things that we can do is click on the content grabber, which of course is like the donut here that you see. Uh, I've zoomed out. I did a command minus or Apple minus until I was able to zoom out and see this whole thing. Sometimes uh, students are like, where's the image? Well, it's so big that you know, it's bleeding off the page, really, really, even off the workspace. So that said, I come up and grab a corner, hold my shift key down, and scale the image in. And you can see it's already starting to take shape, but it's so large. There we go. And it's starting to make a little bit more sense, getting to the size that I want. Now, if I go to view on the menu bar, and I fit page and window, I'm back. To the top. Now, if I grab the content grabber, the little donut, I'm going to slide the graphic around. And you can see the, the brown represents the actual image. The blue represents the frame itself. I'm just going to bring him in there a little bit. That looks good. And there's my graphic size to the way I wanted it. Now that I have this set, I'm going to do another little object effects, drop shadow. I love drop shadows. I'm going to click OK. And there he is. Kind of position him here off the page a little bit. And there we go. I can add a few more images at this point. But I'll just hold off for right now. So that's how you add images. Scale them down. Add text. Uh, scale it up. Scale it down by changing the font size, just like you would in Microsoft Word. No different. Um, if you wanted to add a few other things to play around with, maybe changing the opacity, um, clicking on the graphic and coming over to effects and say, hey, well, let's lower the opacity down of the image. You might get a totally different look and feel for your document. There's a ton of things that you can do, uh, I think limited by your creativity. So with that, one of the final things that we will do is export this out as a PDF file. Remember, Jeremiah Johnson in the assignment does not have InDesign. So he's going to require you to send this to him as a portable document format file or PDF file so he can preview the document on his computer. Generally, what's nice about a PDF file is if you were to send this uh, via email and he would click on it, it would launch a browser or Acrobat, which is a Acrobat Reader, which is a free piece of software from Adobe. Or if it's in the browser, it would already be there as a plug-in and he could actually preview this either via the web or open it right up uh, without having to have InDesign. That way, there's no missing uh, links to pictures or the fonts that you wouldn't have on the system. So a lot of good reasons why to send this as a PDF document. And it's very easy to create this. So let's go to File and Export. And I'm going to export this out as Book Covers PDF. I'm in my Book Covers folder, which, of course, is on the desktop. So everything is in that folder. That's why we created it right from the get-go. At this point, I'm going to select Adobe PDF Print. If it's anything else, select that because we want it for print and then click Save. You'll get a secondary dialog box. You want to make sure it's for high quality print. So if it's any of these other ones, make sure it says high quality. All of these options are pretty much been set by Adobe, which means that you're going to get the best bang for your buck with these options, um, at which point click Export, and that's all there is to it. In order to preview uh, this, I'm going to launch Adobe Acrobat. So you can see what it looks like. I'm going to file open Australia cover PDF. And I did a few changes. Obviously, you can see I added a few more images. But you get the idea of what the book cover looks like, as well as going to show you the India one, but this gives you an idea. Hope this helps.